The Earth is facing a climate crisis. It's been suggested that veganism could be a great way for us all to reduce our collective carbon footprint. But is veganism for the environment all it's cracked up to be? At first glance, it looks like it could absolutely be the solution. Well, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple or straightforward. Contrary to popular belief, continuous crop production is not sustainable. That was the mistake made by the Sumerians 5,000 years ago in what is now Iraq and the Romans in North Africa 2,000 years ago. In both cases, the soils have never recovered. But it could be argued that a diet that includes a small amount of everything, including locally reared meat, is perhaps more achievable and sustainable than a vegan diet. If everyone ate less meat, it would reduce or eliminate the need for intensive animal farming, which has had a high impact on the environment. Research shows that if every family in the United States swapped a red meat meal to a plant-based meal just once a week, the environmental impact would be the same as taking nearly 110 million cars off of the road. Approximately a quarter of the global population live in dryland regions where severe droughts are an ever-present threat. Farming families depending entirely on crops would have no food at all when the rains fail. In contrast, animals put on flesh in the better years and provide a substantial buffer against starvation since they can be slaughtered and eaten one by one over significant periods of time in drought years. It should also be pointed out that unlike many of us in the global north who mostly have cars, central heating, and fly abroad, the emissions associated with meat consumption in the dry lands in the global south are more or less the only carbon footprint these people have and amounts to just a small fraction of our own. What we really need to do is de-industrialize agriculture and reintroduce grass and grazing animals into arable crop rotations. Extensively grazed grasslands have a wide range of benefits. They purify drinking water better than any other land use, and they provide food for pollinating insects at times of year when there is little else available. They also store vast amounts of carbon which if released through conversion to continuous crop production would accelerate global warming even faster than it is currently occurring. Full-scale veganism would also lead us to the need to import a very great deal more food. Unlike milk, cheese and eggs, staples for the more sensible and sustainable vegetarian diet, which can basically be sourced anywhere where humans live, Voguish vegan food is rarely local food. For example, people in Britain who adopt a vegan diet should be eating potatoes, bread, legumes, and domestic vegetables. Yet instead, it is often the case that they opt for foreign foods, such as pomegranates and mangoes, which are flown in from India. The demand for even more fashionable foods such as avocados and quinoa, which come from South America, has pushed up prices so much that people in their country of origin can no longer afford to eat them. In 2013, which the UN dubbed the Year of Quinoa, prices of the so-called miracle grain of the Andes had reportedly become too expensive for local people to buy. But this grain is a staple part of the region's diet. The price of the superfood has tripled since 2006 to reach over $3 a pound, which is more expensive than chicken, causing average quinoa consumption in the region to fall. So agriculture's effect on climate change is a complex issue. Changing your shopping list, no matter how radically, will not solve all of the world's problems. We need to restructure our economy away from fossil fuel reliance and improve livelihoods as we do it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.
and come back soon for more Factables. 